Oh, hey, we gotta do X, Y, Z. He's like, I don't want, I don't want to like go too hard because like I'm gonna like break somebody, man. He's strong. So this is this part, right? I I just suit up as a gnome for certain parts. So I was one of the gnomes for his fight. He was hitting me. He was really hitting me, and I was just dealing with him. Did it make it look good? Um, I did not have any fight choreography training martial arts anything before I was asked on this project and Justin was like do like move and I was like I mean yeah like I do you dance, dance? I, I think he was like you dance or anything and he was like yeah I, I have like some dance experience and he was like you'll do it'll be fine and I'm like oh I'll be doing some can can kicks and I was like I can kick pretty high yeah. that works I checked out yeah I checked out a big part of our uh, training regimen was we, we trained with everybody for about a year beforehand. So me and Barbara were the only ones walking in with martial arts experience. Like you said, he's, a, he's an MMA fighter. I'm a black belt of 15 years, um, karate and taekwondo and all this jazz, not taekwondo, uh, jiu-jitsu and all that. Uh, Autumn which came in with cheerleading experience. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here today. Um, Gina came in with, also with dancing experience. Also couldn't be here today. Sad. Miranda came in with dance experience, uh, Dan Derek came in with uh, swordplay experience, and I said, all right, can you do X, Y, Z? Fantastic. We'll, teach, we'll take that, and we'll train you how to fight from that. We did the same thing with Kit, except Kit had you know, much less to do, especially since you came in really late in the game. How, how long was it in between us casting and actually shooting? I think it was only like a month. I think I only had a month to do everything. Yeah, I came in. I came in really late because like it was like the last minute. You had someone and they dropped, and you were like, "Hey, I need another person." I'm like, "I'll be." So when I when I came on board and and then we were doing everything, yeah, it was only it was only that, and then we haven't even made the site yet. There was some crafts or anything. I didn't have time because I had something else I was preparing for. He, I tried to explain to him how to make a prop. He sent me a picture and I was like, yeah, I'll just do it. <laughs> because it was really bad. <laughs> how, how long have you been cosplaying and like making props? Um, I mean, if you count in high school when I wore like old, old school Tamari to class. <laughs> and that was like 03. Um, but I started like cosplaying in like 2011 and then I made my first cosplay in 2012. So who was your first cosplay? The first one that I made was um, Tamari Shippuden and then Lucy from Elven the Year. So I actually have a question for Justin. Um, so we watched a clip so everyone's a little familiar with what we did. It is a half hour long and in its entirety. And by the time I got on the project, there was already a script. So in terms of the theme of the panel, adapting um, from the Japanese to the American, and then from what's already been done to a fan film, uh, what, how was the process of this, writing this script uh, based off material that's been, like you said, around for years and years and years? So admittedly, it was trickier than I originally thought. So I, I, I've been watching Power Rangers for years, like my entire life. And so walking into it and just trying to capture the spirit of Power Rangers, I feel like I was able to do because I didn't fall into the same pit traps as most fan creators do, um, where they're like, hey, let's make it dark and bloody and edgy and sex and gore and violence. I'm like, no, this is not what this, you know, that, that has its place. You know, and I, I love stuff like Power Rangers on Warrior. Yeah, I love stuff like, you know, Bloodlines and Grips. I watch that stuff. It's amazing. But for this, I was like, no. I'm going to go back. I'm going to take this whole thing to its roots, to what it has always been and what it's always meant to be. A lighthearted, cheesy, dumb kids show that we can all just have a good feel over. Because at the end of the day, like, yeah, it can be cheesy. It can be goofy. It can be, you know ridiculous, but at the same time, that's what makes it amazing. That's what makes it entertaining. Woo! And that's exactly what sold me on doing it, too. I was like, is this going to be some kind of gritty, like, we're going to do something so cool and off this world and our own spin on it, and I'm like, no, it's camp. No, it's camp, and we're going to stick with it, because that's why we love it, why change something when it's not broken. Yeah.
So we got to choose our names for our our characters, right? So I'm over here messaging Justin. I was like, hey, this doesn't sound too corny, right? I'm Julius, aka Jules. I'm trying to play with the theme of Gem Paladins. He was like, no, you son of a bitch, you're a genius. I was like, thank you. But my name is Crystal. Crystal. And then there was uh, Amber the Green Ranger and Jay the Pink Ranger. And then there's Cyrus, the most no no relation to Miley Cyrus or Billy Ray Cyrus. I mean, come on. Who has no gem name. And then I, I was sitting there, I was like, no, Tony totally doesn't either. Then I realized to myself, like, no, he does. Because my character, Tony, his full name is actually Stony. He is Stony the Red Ranger. Uh, that is canonical. Outrageous. <laughs> no, it's just it's like it's, no. Instead of saying like Anthony, it's just short name. Okay. Okay. Sorry. All right. All right. <laughs> when I thought of that idea, I was like, I can't not. This is too stupid not to. I thought it was like you have gem names, and I was like Crystal, Jules, and you're like I'm Tony, and I was like, what? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Crystal. I'm Jules. Yeah. Amber. Jay. Tony. Was uh. So was there any, so you could current major, was that the inspiration for this, like, is it different writing a script for a different series adaptation of Rangers? Like, if this, like, if this were to be, you know, for the real writers, you, like, the, what, do you expect the further um, iterations of Power Rangers and the fan film you write to kind of mirror it, or is it kind of the same across any kind of Power Ranger iteration? Personally, I, I've always been more a fan of when seasons can kind of, kind of at least go towards the idea, the general vibe of like the original season. So I'm going to use um, the season Time Force as my example, from time from Time Ranger to Time Force, and you know it's about a season about space cops going through time, capturing bad guys, shenanigandering. And I love Time Force, you know. It, it's, a, it's not quite a one-for-one, one, but it's pretty close. It captures a lot of the same spirits and the same, a lot of the same character beats. Like, with Crystal, when I wrote Crystal, I, ca I went for... I basically said, okay, let's take Takamichi, the, the Kirame Silver Ranger, but let's make her... or let's make them just a little bit more angsty? A little bit more like Eric from, from Time Force or Merrick from Wild Force. Because, you know, those, those like, brooding Sixth Ranger stories, you know, translating them into Power Rangers and, you know, making them just, uh, you know, just, um, just giving them that little bit more edge that they need. Like, there needs to be some of that grounding to, you know, get these characters to a more campy, more lighthearted place. So that's kind of where, you know, Crystal, a lot of that came from. Um, I was going to say, the way the scene was described to me, there's a, a, a little heartfelt moment, and Crystal has a, a moment to speak, a little monologue, and we're like, this is like your anime close-up, like, like, your heads in, and like, you know, like, the ears, and like, looking down, and you like, look up, and you're like, I've been a ranger a really long time. It was so anime. <laughs> it was so anime. Like, and this happened, and they <laughs> slaughtered my family, and like, it's like, it's so, like, Stereotypical, but it's like it hits yes, because um, I, I do think that Justin did a great job of emulating the passion and the heart that really goes into producing something like this. Um, when you are doing like a passion project, a fan film, something you know people are going to watch and judge, you know, based on the original content. It's scary, but when you love something enough, like you can kind of overcome all of that and just make something. And I think Justin, the love he has for Power Rangers really shows throughout, and it did throughout the entire process of production. You can just tell that he loves this stuff. And I, it's important to, to really enjoy the content that you're going to make content about. Um, that's how you make it convincing and emotionally heartfelt and important. Absolutely. But a lot of those anime moments were from Marguerite's idea. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, what I'm was like, cool? actually, <laughs> not this guy. Because <laughs> like, when you brought those ideas to me, I was like, yes, yes, yes. Like, what, was, what was your inspiration, your idea behind that when, when it finally popped in your head? Okay, well, I had, like, speaking on stereotypes of anime, um, Cyrus, as soon as, when we were in the phone booth, I was kind of generating these ideas, like, what are these characters going to be? And because I wanted it to be really campy fun, anime came to my uh, my brain first. 
I remember the first thing I made about Cyrus down there, the Blue Ranger, was you know that that the glasses when he puts up the glasses, the anime character who's a serious one pushes up his glasses and the gleam on his glasses, and he's always a serious, you know, character. That to me was Cyrus, and I told him that in the film was like that is who you are. So making these connections to those kind of things is kind of how I became, and I watch a lot of anime, obviously we all watch a lot of anime. So, um, that is, and, and I borrowed show, uh, scenes and shots from those shows to kind of make it work. Were there any specific uh, show scenes, anything that is like, that you specifically cited? Was there like a moment in Naruto or a moment in like Elfin Lead or something you're like, that, that? Um, well, actually, <laughs> It's kind of funny, most of it, this is going to be really random, most of it came from Warren High School Host Club. Yeah! Uh, yo, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, honestly, because I wanted to be really drama and really camp, and I can't think of more lovable, a more lovable group of dramatic, campy people. You know, I and, never knew this until right now, and now that I'm hearing it, it makes so much yeah. sense. That's kind of what it was, it was in high school, what was called, I was like, look at these group of people and I want to give them all really distinct characteristics and there's a lot of really fun shots where it's so dramatic, like you're seeing and things yeah, like that. And, like, and that's the thing, is like, Oron has like a lot of goofy problems, but to these characters, like to Tamaki, like this feels so real, like you can tell it feels like the end of the world to him and it's just like, it's like what, like Haruki doesn't want to have tea with him, like why is it so simple? But you can tell that it means a lot. Yeah, so if that didn't already, you weren't already sold, uh, definitely go watch the film. Maybe you'll see Orr in High School Host Club. <laughs> or if you haven't seen Orr High School Host Club, yeah, go watch yeah, that. Go watch. Highly One recommend. will inspire you to watch the other. Either way, watch both. Yes. Preferably Jeff Paladin's first. Love God, watch that first. Yes. I was going to say, I feel like um, now that we're kind of explaining around it, do you want to give like a brief overview like of what our fan film is about, kind of a story, without giving away too much? So... A synopsis. A synopsis. A synopsis. <laughs> right. You gave that to the worst person. <laughs> <laughs> I do not talk short. I talk in long-winded sentences. Yeah, wait. I'll help you out. Fantastic. So Power Rangers Gem Paladins is the story of... So, I knew from day one that I wanted to do a Six Ranger story. I knew I did not want to do an origin story. So when you watch this, a lot of people will always ask me, like, hold on, is there like a lot of backstory to this? Yeah. So the way that I describe Gem Paladins, we basically made an episode. If this was a whole season, you know, your standard 40, 50 episodes of Power Rangers, which is in most seasons, this is like episode 17, 18, we're just dropping you into. We said, screw it, this is, this is this is the story we want to, want to tell. We will sprinkle enough backstory in there. If people pick up, people pick up, hey, awesome. So the actual the concept is, like I said, it is a Sixth Ranger story. So you, your Tommies and your, your Merricks, your, uh, your Ion, stuff like that, where the goal is uh, Crystal, our Silver Ranger, uh, came to Earth, you know, hunting, hunting the big bad, our Lord Zed, said, ah, oh, I want to kill him. Oh, darn it, he's too strong, he's going to beat the anime, crap. So, uh, the ultimate goal was, uh, we find out, you know, there, there is a sixth ranger on Earth, and we're like, we got to recruit them, and we try to recruit them, and they're basically like, No. Anime brooding. <laughs> so they, they go all full anime brooding with it, and, you know, me being Tony, being, uh, I want to describe Tony very much like the Naruto, like, yeah. no, friendship, friendship is power. That's basically Tony in a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, everything will be defeated with friendship, including friendship. Like, um, Tony. Yeah. Yes. Like, overwhelming optimism. It's like, yup, we're gonna get through this. It's, like, disgustingly sweet. It is. And it's, you know, it's Tony, and he's like, you know, just under no circumstances is he going to give up. Like, hey, there's a sixth ranger. There's somebody who's supposed to, who's destined to be part of our team. We're not going to give up on them. Um, and then shenanigans ensue. Uh, Crystal doesn't want to join our team for very personal reasons, which we have a whole scene dedicated to, going over their backstory and all this and that. Big monologue. Oh, that's a big monologue. Um, and eventually, us doing the whole anime, you know, holding hands, kumbaya, bull crap, and then. What you just saw, you know, us beating living crap out of a kid. Oh, poor kid. You beat the crap out of us, and we came back and beat you up on there. Mm -hmm. 
Using the power of friendship. So speaking of the monologue, Miranda, should I tell them a little blooper about what you oh, did during that monologue? Sure. So during the, uh, if you guys go and watch Jim Palad, there, there's a part where she's talking about her past and everything. And during the shoot, uh, when I come over to her and I, I touch her on the shoulder, she gives me this, like the first time we were shooting it, she gives me this funny, like, sad, the saddest funny look ever. And, this is this is what I see when she turns up. <laughs> Put your mask down for a second. We gotta see this. It's it's so good. It's, this is exactly what I saw. She did it like three times. I like, didn't stop laughing. Hey, we the, had to look fucked for laughter. He's right. like, all right, I got it. To be fair, the sun was in her face. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that was a sunny day. Oh, it was hot. It was bright. I needed an umbrella. Yeah. Like you saw us in those windbreakers. We rolled those windbreakers the entire shoot. We shot for what, like a total of like ten days spread across three months during the summer. It was a nightmare. Hmm? We yes, chose the, hottest the hottest days. We chose the hottest days, or the hottest days chose us. I actually got convinced, like, that, like, one of the hottest days of the yes. summer was, like, one of the peak days where we were like, all right, let's go outside and keep each other for, like, four hours, and we're like, yes! Yeah, when you watch that, we have been doing, we had been doing it for hours and hours and hours and hours, what you watched, which is a three-minute segment. You know, it's, and then that has to do with anything you want to adapt, anything you ever want to shoot, and if you're interested in filmmaking, that's that's what's going to happen. It's a lot, a whole day for three minutes. Like, we, we, we've also, like, some of us have participated, a few, I, on the panel with Barbara, a couple of others, we've done some, like, 48-hour film fest, <laughs> and, like, it, you have 48 hours, and, like, you realize in that amount of time, you're like, holy crap, making a movie is hard, like, I don't know how to do any of this, like, and so when you, like, you know, you're shooting something, you're like, oh, I don't want this to be three minutes, it's gonna take you weeks, yeah. it could take you weeks yeah. to get what you want, um, and it's just, you know, the reality of filmmaking, so if any of you are interested in making your own films, like, it takes time, yeah. but it's, it's worth it, yeah. it's worth it. Yeah. It is genuinely one of the most rewarding experiences any of us have ever had. So if you have ever had any interest in going into film or anything artistic, no matter how hard it is, no matter how many naysayers they are, screw them, go do it, chase your dreams. I have a, I have a four-year degree in mu like theater, musical theater performance, so like I, you know, I can't stress that enough. If you want to go for something, do it, because you only got to do what you're passionate about. Life is way too short to not. If you can dream it, you can do it. Yeah. So we decided to be Power Rangers. If anybody got that right now, please tell me. Yeah. You know, think about it. Um, Derek and I got, and Kit all got to speak about how you know, we got involved in this project. What about our Yellow and Silver Rangers? How did you guys get in on this? Oh, I got this. Oh, I got this, okay. So, what? Uh, maybe it was October of last year. September? September? So I get a text message from a friend I haven't heard in two years. Disappeared from social media. Name Phil. He messaged me like, hey, you interested in being a Power Ranger? I did not hesitate. I was like, yes. And so I gave him my phone number and my, my email to send uh, to Justin here. And then as soon as it, I didn't expect Justin to message me right away. As soon as it did, uh, I gave my, 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 my phone number. He messaged me right away, asked me, do I know anything about it? I was like, yes. We, I, I, I was like, I know we use Sentai footage in Power Rangers. I know we do this and that. I told him I actually stopped watching it after maybe the first couple of seasons, but I always, I'm still a Power Ranger fan, but I'm an OG Power Ranger fan, first season, you know, when Tommy was still green. <laughs> but yeah, he messaged me, and I supposedly, my friend Phil showed him like all my social media that I you know I do martial arts, I act too, and then I was like, apparently I was perfect for it. It's like, you got a martial artist and an actor, and I got on board from there, and then one thing is I have this one problem, I wouldn't say it's a real problem, once I get involved, I try to take on more and more, so I, went, I didn't go in there just to be an actor, I went there, I helped with training, I, I helped find him other actors, get other people involved, and so on. Your fight scenes were some of my favorite, Barbara, they were so good. Okay, okay I want you to know my fight scenes, I, I'm very picky because... 
had not done sound booth recording because I know that there might be people here or who had either have been interested in um, voice recording, being a voice actor, or have you know wondering how voice acting goes. So maybe speaking about what it was like to dub over, just like how in traditional Power Rangers you would dub over. How was it to be a voice actor and dubbing, watching the footage in front of you? So I'm gonna go first real quick. Okay. First of all, I've never done anything in film before, like in my life. So it was kind of difficult for me to like really get my voice to do what I wanted it to do. And with you coaching me, you know, telling me how to vocalize that, especially during the morph sequence and during the fight scenes, it, it like I had to literally try to dig deep and actually get out those yeah, you know, no, and you know, all that stuff. So. Honestly, it was a real challenge, but I mean, in the end, it, it ended up coming out really good, and I appreciate the teachings you gave me, and I'm going to use those in the future. Um, it's, it's goofy. Uh, voice acting is goofy. You get in the booth, and they're like, all right, you see what they're doing up there, like, not like, scream, but like, you're, like, like, it's like a scream you've never scrumped before with, like, all of the pain in the world, and you're like, Ah, ah, and like a good start, and do it like five more times, and I'm like, okay. And it's a lot of like, you know, just sitting there, and you're like, oh, like just making noise, and you're like, oh, okay. And then they're like, all right, you're done. And I was like, yeah, okay, sure, if that's what you want. Um, but it's fun. Voiceover is what I want to do. Um, and with that question, we want to ask you guys at this turn, we're turning it around to you, if anybody has questions for us. Justin, do you want to start this, or should we just start with our first question? Does anybody have, have you got a question? I, no, no, I guess I'll just have to speak loudly. Yeah. Uh, so, a couple years ago, I committed to watching all the Sentai in order, starting with Jude and Jeff. Hold on one second, you are freaking awesome. That is awesome. Thank you. Uh, and all the Power Rangers corresponding, but in release order. So, I'm on Kaku Danger, but I'm still watching the first season of Mighty Morphin, because those were both 1993. Anyway, uh, where was it? Right. So, I'm only on Kaku Danger, so I want to ask, between Jude Danger, uh, Die Danger, and Kaku Danger, do any of you guys have any opinions or like favorites among those? He's got an opinion. I yeah. Guess. Well, I, I think I'm I think I'm the only one who's actually watched all three of those sometimes. So, Cocker Rangers. Have you watched Cocker Rangers? I watched a little bit. I watched a little bit of Jew Rangers. Right that's it. Okay. So, I'm still trying to get there. Yeah. So, Cocker Rangers hilarious. I think it's a well-paced show. Die Ranger is probably one of my favorites. I'm trying to think the action is amazing. Jew Ranger is weird. It's literally it's so about weird. child murder. For context, yes. is Jew Ranger the Megazord is God? The Megazord is God. God. So he in, is God. So in the original Mighty Morphin, the Megazord is literally God. Yeah. And Bandora, who, who became Rita Repulsa, she's literally, her plan is ultimately go around and murder children. That's not even an exaggeration. She's not. Let's just throw the cards. Murder children. Specifically. Oh, so crazy. <laughs> Alright, thank you. Of course. You got any more questions? You, you, did a, you did one of these? Whoa. Yeah. Now you're scratching your head. Alright. <laughs> nice yes, over there. So the Yellow Ranger said what his favorite season of, of, of Power Rangers is. Of the ones that have actually watched seasons on the panel, can you say what your favorite is? Damn. Yes. 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 Your, uh, the White Ranger is the best, not the Drake. I, as much as I would like to agree with that statement, I would respectfully disagree and say that the Green Ranger is probably the best of all time. But that's just my opinion. I will stick to that opinion and I will appreciate my other opinion. Yeah, great power. Great, but, but, but um, ultimately, personally, my favorite season, it's kind of a tie, really. Um, I'm a really, 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 really big fan of, uh, I, it's deleting me right now. Um, it'll come to me in a second. Uh, Ah. Alright, got it. Uh, I'm a really big fan of Lost Galaxy, mainly because of the Magnet Defender. That's one of my top five Rangers of all time. Yeah. I have to take a yeah. 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 
one of the coolest things I swear to God. That, once I saw that, I was sold. But uh, second to, I'd say, to that, it would definitely be Ninja Storm, because the Thunder Rangers and obviously the Green Samurai Ranger. Number one will always be my original, the MPR, because so the Green Ranger. Just saying. So my top three are in, uh, from third to third to first. I'm gonna get some haters for this. In Space is actually on my number third. What? what? I love In Space. Wow. I'm gonna put it this way. I love In Space. I just met Sal Ward. I looked him dead in the eyes. He's a big reason why I became a Power Rangers fan. But Space, space is still only number three. TJ's cool. TJ's amazing. So is Ash. Second is RPM. Because let's be real. The Power Rangers and the Robot Apocalypse is amazing. I want that film on that. And my top one is actually Power Rangers Time Force. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, the reaction from all of you, the, the third one, you're like, what? And the second one, you're like, what? And the first one, you're like, oh, okay. And like I said, I, 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 I got to about that. I'm, I'm such a big Time Force fan. Crystal was majorly based off the Sixth Ranger from Time Force. Ooh. Yeah, like a lot of Crystal's character was based off of Eric. That's cool. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Another question? Any other questions? Yes. I saw that one. What are your guys' favorite super? Like from like, you know, Master Mode, and you got like, you know, Space Oh, you're talking about like the Battleizers? Yeah. Oh, I've always been a really big fan of the Mystic Force one. You got like the yeah. blue and red, the dragon, freaking battles and sticks. Oh, that thing's so cool. Um, I saw one back there. Yeah. Yes! Do I look like a man who can relax? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after almost every shoot, for some reason, I became very familiar with Apple Pie. Yes. <laughs> I've been there almost every time we shot something. I remember. One night, I felt like I was being challenged at Applebee's. I told the dude, like, what was that, two for 25? It's like a two for 25 deal, you know. Then you he kind of questioned me and looked at me like I was going to get one meal. I was like, no, I want both of these with the onion rings. And I took that challenge and ate them all, all of my meal there, both of them, with the onion rings. I said, I will have the two. I will have the two. <laughs> I've watched this man eat it is something else. Actually, no, no, no. I'm sorry, yes, I have to say something. You, we've watched uh, this eat. This is a terrifying story I just have of Justin. I once watched this man. This is so scary. Oh I'm, 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 I'm at McDonald's drive through and we're pulling away, and I, I, uh, he gets six chicken nuggets, no sauce. And I'm like, okay, cool. And he proceeds to stack all of them in like a big chicken tower, and like just the whole thing. And I was like, oh. Six is actually child's play for me. He finished it in like 30 seconds. I literally had to tweet about it. I was like, I have never seen anything like this, and I'm scared. For Raven, I was in the backseat when I saw that happen too, so I'm a second witness to that. It was no insane. sauce! I've it never seen it happen before. Try! Oh, just no sauce. No dipping sauce for part. He just annihilated that in like a matter of seconds. But you were saying something about like having a lot of synchronicity. You know, we've been a team for about a year. You know what we should do? We haven't done this in a little bit. Uh -oh. It's more for time. Oh! <laughs> I'll show you what a real team looks like. Great work, sir. <laughs> All right, here we go. Do I gotta turn it up? Okay. Alright, let's go. Ready? Four for Speaking of that, um, so we did a little TikTok about the morphine grid being down. Uh, gas prices are getting out of control, and we tried to summon the resorts, and we forgot we didn't fill them, so we stopped at a near gas station, and uh, because of the inflation, we couldn't do anything about the town we were in, so, uh, you know, maybe next paycheck we'll, we'll handle that. Next time. Next paycheck. Next paycheck. All right. Whenever I get involved in a project, I get, I start to develop an obsession. I, 
<laughs> right, I developed this obsession, right? So, for example, I'm a big Metal Gear Solid fan, so I spent a couple of thousand on just collectibles. Once I got back into Power Rangers and got back to the zone, I remember just ordering stuff. Like, I got a bunch of Megazords, uh, with the, the Legacy Morphers for Season 1 Power Rangers. I just, I, it, it, I had to stop myself, but, you know, it was worth it. He has a problem. It's actually really serious. Somebody said that out. Real quick, we have, more, we have more questions real quick. Um, All right. Favorite Morpher, not including your own? I actually really like the Lightspeed Morpher. Honestly, it's the Ninja Storm Ring one for me. And I actually have it somewhere right now. I totally would tell you about it. Uh, the Master Morpher. I, I, only, I only really know he's, he's in a few others. Oh, wait, wait, I like the, I like the Rail Rider one. Oh, those yeah. ones are cool. Those are cool. I like those. Uh, yeah. I thought I saw one more question. I'll take this one as the last one. Going off of his question about favorite series, what's your favorite main villain? Like the big bad guy. Ooh. Give me some strong all day. <laughs> Melody Perkins. That you her in those that sleek black attire going around fucking shit up. I'm Tom and OP dead with like the oh, music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a society. That man got black force energy and hit the watch screen. <laughs> oh my god. He will stop at nothing. Nothing. Serpent here is is fire. Beautiful. I do, I, I, I do. I told you, like, uh, it's, I'm an OG fan, so I like the first two seasons. I mean, I like all of them, but I have to go with Rita. All right. All right. That's a good one. I know that one, and that's a great one. That's, that is Margaret in the back. I understood that reference. Yeah, I got that reference. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, as we're coming to a close on this, we got about five minutes left. So, as, as you all saw, we've now done, done Gem Pallage, we've done Cure Major. So who here follows us, us on the social medias, Instagrams, all that? I can help you. Oh, come on. Okay. So some of you don't know that after Gem Paladins, we're doing one, we're doing, we're doing more Sentai adaptations. With each one, it's going to be adapting a new Sentai. So Gem Paladins, our time is over, unfortunately. We are now going to be going on to. <laughs> Adapting Russia Sentai, Toe Futurist, Power Rangers, Rail Riders. And we already announced our cast. Red's going to be played by Armand Garnett. Blue's going to be played by Ryan Cox. Yellow's going to be played by Heather Riddle. Green's going to be played by Zach Davis. Pink's going to be held, is going to be held by Jenna Marcy. And the Orange Ranger, we're keeping him for right now. Can I say something really quick? Yes, yeah. Okay. I, um, I just want to do a quick shout out because I've noticed some something in the crowd. Um, we have some very special guests in the crowd. If you were a gnome for our short film, can you Put stand you up, right? Yeah. Can you stand up? up? No. Yeah. Ah. Actually, no, he's a great example. We're about to say that. This guy got kicked around, he got punched, he hold, got Hold on. This guy, we're going to hit him up here in a second. Pull up the next image. Because after we do part two of Rail Riders, we've already announced part three. Double to Sentai, Jewel Jurors, Power Rangers, Beast Hunters. This man right here is our next Green Ranger! <laughs> so part three, part three is going to be Power Rangers, Beast Hunters adapting Jewel Jurors. It's an animal-based Sentai. Red's going to be helmed by Anthony Womack. Blue's going to be handed by Dan Parker. Yellow Josh Gidley. Green Mark Cooper. Orange by uh, White Woodside. Black, we're keeping him right now. And there's, there's one more that we kind of kept in the back of our pocket for right this moment. And this is a moment I've been waiting for for the last probably about a month or so. So, we never announced the identity of our White Ranger, who's a core five member, and a lot of people thought that's really weird. Why did we never announce the one, like, who's essentially supposed to be our Pink Ranger? But I'm going to tell you this all right now. The White Ranger's in this room right now. And we wanted to reveal them here in front of Lot, in front of God and everybody but I need all of your help to coax them out. So here's what I want you all to do. I want you to start chanting with me and I want you to coax them out. Just say, White Ranger. White Ranger. White Ranger. White Ranger. White Ranger. Come on. White Ranger. Come on. White Ranger. White Ranger. White Ranger. White Ranger. White Ranger. White Ranger. White Ranger, White Ranger. White Ranger. White Ranger. White Ranger. White Ranger. please stand up. Yeah. So the plan 
demand is for each of our upcoming Sentai adaptations, one, if not two, Jet Paladins will be returning for each one. So somebody's coming back for Rail Riders, and two are coming back for Beast Hunters, including our White Ranger. So Miranda Cole's not done yet, folks. You'll be seeing them again next season. I'm excited. <laughs> and with Sounds that, very excited. is that our time? I believe that. We got like, yeah, we got like two minutes. We took it like right to the wire. All right. Well, I think that uh, just for a closing thought, I just want to thank everyone for coming to this panel. This was our first time throwing a panel together like this, and it's a dream come true when you get to do what you love and share it with people um, you don't know or who are just as nerdy as you are. So thank you for uh, letting us have that experience. Honestly. Yeah. Also, for you to come to our first panel. We love you all. You make this experience worth it. Also, when you guys get a chance, we would definitely really appreciate it if you checked out the film Power and Jump yeah. Paladins on YouTube. Uh, unfortunately, because of YouTube restrictions, we were only able to get a good chunk and portion of the film on there. But in the link in the description below, there is a link to the full version of that. So make sure you definitely check that out as well. Show us some love, support, and show us that you really love Power Rangers, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. And if you guys are interested, especially people who are now fans of the series, anybody who came in a fan of the series, or anybody who's just, who we just convinced to somehow like us, thank you. Don't know how that happened. Uh, we brought some free prints for everybody. We're going to be doing a signing outside. Everyone, you know, just take one. If you want to sign, cool. If you want to just clean, okay, yeah, take it. We're going to be doing it right out there. But yeah, we'd love to sit down and talk with you all. So come get us out there. And that's just more for me.